Don't get nervous today, but I'm going to preach an entire chapter from the Bible. It's Psalm 133. Before you get too worried about getting hungry, it's only three verses. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren or the church to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. It is like the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there, the bottom line, for there, let me get the first line to you and then the bottom line. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, for there, God commands the blessing, even life forevermore. In this comeback year, as we move into the remaining months of 2021, I want to speak to you for a moment today about the comeback of unity. The comeback of unity. If you're ready for the word, let's give the Lord a great shout of praise and let's thank him. Come on. Yeah, you may be seated. There's no underestimating the power of a church in unity. There is no way I could overstate it. This text that I will put you in in a moment is a great and complete reminder of the premium price that God places upon unity. Listen to me, everybody. The church, what you and I are a part of, we are a part of the most powerful organization and group and body in the world. In fact, there is a statement that Jesus makes that is not made about any other entity. He makes it over in Matthew 16 and 18. I will say to you, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not, cannot, nor will ever prevail against it. We are a part of this wonderful organization, this God idea called the church. And Jesus loves his church. Jesus speaks to his church. He died for his church, and he's coming back for his church. And there is no way, if there were a million hells and a billion devils, that they would have enough power to defeat and bring down the church. Well, you say, okay, pastor, then how is it that churches fail? How is it that churches struggle? How is it that churches, if the devil, if the devil does not bring churches down, and the devil cannot bring churches down, then how is it that any of them ever come down? It's not because of the attack from the outside that destroys churches. Churches don't get destroyed because of the mean old devil. Churches don't fall apart because the devil did it. What the church struggles with is not the attack from without, but from division that starts within. We crumble upon ourselves. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I've had the occasion for uh, many, many times. It's always fun to go and preach at other churches, preach at other churches in other areas, in other uh, countries. And every time I do, I just praise God for all of you. I can't. I'm preaching on Sunday morning thinking what's happening back at 2339 West Car Road. The reality is I've been to churches where the pastor and the board didn't get along, or that side didn't like that side, or they, they were on that end of the uh, uh, pendulum and someone else was swinging it the other way. And I've been to churches, and, you know, I, I think that when I get anointed, I can bring a good word. But there's not enough good word that can fix that. Come on, church. I mean, I, I've been places where they were in this, this war with each other, and I want to think, what am I doing here? 
Uh, until you guys grow up and heal your differences from within, I mean, the greatest preacher, Jesus himself, couldn't come and fix this until you let him. Come on, somebody. And there's something to be said of this incredible decision that we make to be in unity. And I want to go on record today that there's no strife, there's no attack, there's no division. Will you agree with me? There's no politics, there's no way of looking at life, there's no way of feeling things out, that we all have our perspective, and I understand that, and it's impossible for us all to agree on everything because there are people, listen, here's the beauty of unity. You may not know it, but I know it. And I'm going to let you in on something. You're sitting with some people that don't agree with you about everything. Unity does not demand that we agree with each other on everything. But it does demand we agree with, every, we agree with each other on the main thing. Can I say it again? Unity never demanded that we agree. Listen, if, if I had my way, you know, you all, you all would... Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. You would like my sports team. And if you had your way, some of you had your way. I mean, I, you don't, won't believe the amount of Buckeye gear people give me. They think they're going to make me stop rooting for Notre Dame to be a Buckeye fan. And I just, whenever I receive Buckeye gear, I thank them for the car rags. Amen, somebody. I'm not going to wear it. I, I just you, You're not going to convert me, nor am I going to convert you. The reality is there are some things that just don't matter. Not everything can be important. But I will tell you what last, the, the last year and a half has been about. Make no mistake. Are you all hearing me in this church? The, make no mistake. The target of all that we've walked through has been on the unity of the church. That is where the enemy has tried to bring uh, quarrels and divisions and, mis and disagreements to the degree that the church cracks under its own weight of pride or whatever it might be just because we won our way and we want to prove we're right, the reality is uh, we must, listen to me, lighthouse, we must fight for unity. The devil cannot destroy us, only us, only we can destroy us. So the battle lines get drawn, are you on my side or are you on their side? The main question is, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? James 3 and 16, it's a powerful verse. It says, for wherever there is envy and self-seeking, there is confusion in every evil work. When we have confusion brought in, there is every opportunity the devil comes and the devil wants to divide. Galatians 5.15, if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Romans 12.18, as much as possible, you live peaceably with others around you. Church, i got to tell you, I am so proud of our church family, a, a family that uh, is sizable like we are, a, a people that, you know, we have about this many easily, that, that, can't, that aren't here today. Last week, for example, we had 180 absentees. Now, in the month of September, that number of absentees is going to go way, way, way down low because we're going to have a come back to church month. Did you hear me? And we're going to get everybody to get their bees in the peas. Uh-huh. And we are going to fill this place up once again. But the reality is, it's, it's, just a, it's just a fact of life. We are going to come upon things that we will disagree about. I told someone this week, you know, I, I appreciate my church so much. that No one was coming at me. No one was uh, trying to advise me. No one was trying to um, tell me that I was doing too much of that or not enough that. When we, when we went through what we went through, uh, our church... Our church, as far as I'm concerned, raised the bar really high. And there would be a lot less pastors leaving their churches if every church was like Lighthouse. But I just want to say to them,
I'm sorry, your church is not like Lighthouse, but tough on you. The reality is we've got a great group of mature people here who understands that your pastor does his very best. God bless all six amens. Hallelujah. And I had never pastored a church during a pandemic before. There was no class I ever took on 101 how to pastor during a pandemic. I just did the best I could. We just made the best decisions we could. And I know maybe not everybody agree with every decision, but the reality is we cannot let what drives us apart be greater than what brings us together. When the church, I want you to hear this, underestimates, and I've got a list what happens. I'll give it to you. When we underestimate what happens with unity, the results can be and will be devastating. Our testimony is tarnished. Our reputation is discredited. Our influence is diminished. Our mission is unfinished. Our purpose is unclear. Our worship is insincere. I think that rhymes. I didn't even know it. Our testimony is tarnished, our reputation is discredited, our influence is diminished, our mission is unfinished. Our purpose is unclear, and our worship is insincere. Wow! I'm a poet and didn't even realize it. Amen! Our growth is limited, our victory is minimized, our potential is underachieved, and our anointing is constricted. Unless there is a church that is in unity, can I just be really upfront with you. Do you think the truth could possibly be that, that Richmond, Indiana and the surrounding counties, counties and area need Lighthouse to be a great church? Turn to someone and say, I just think today's not the day for you to not say amen. Just go ahead and tell them that right now. I mean, I, I'm not sure Big Dog's going to be handling that too great today. I said, do you think for example, the, the Lighthouse Assembly of God needs to be a strong, powerful church in this community. Here's the reality. There has to be a church, and there has to be a group of people strong enough, mature enough, spiritual enough, godly enough to set aside our disagreements on things that don't matter. I know we think these things matter, but the reality is sometimes we make them too important. We make our opinion too important. We make being right too important. I'm guilty of that one. Come on. And the reality is we've got to make our minds up that there has to be God, help us. I want there to be a church. We prayed for a few people today that are sick. I hope you know we wasn't trying to be courteous. We weren't trying to be nice. Oh, well, you know, you get paid to pray for people. So, yeah, you know, you need to remember to do that. <laughs> I hope you know that when we pray for you, we expect you to be healed. Amen, in Jesus' name. Uh, there has to be a church that can, can stem the tide of this hatred and this uh, the, the insidious, heinous attack of drugs in this community. And the lies of sexual confusion. Where is that church that's going to stay and be strong and say to hell, you listen to me. You're not working that garbage in my neighborhood anymore. And you better listen because I got the backing of the Lighthouse Assembly of God behind me. And I'm coming to you with the full force of this church. And we won't let you continue your tyranny and your sin and your attack and your ruination of our youth and our kids. We got kids going back to schools. And when they go back to their schools, some of them resemble war zones and, 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 and drug houses and all kinds of sin and confusion and every kind of depravity and we've got to have a church that will stand against and hell is intimidated and backs down but that church can't be strong if we are not in complete unity about where our victory lies and church it's time for a praise break because our victory lies in none other than the power of the blood of Jesus hey 
That's where our victory is. You can go and tell the devil, my pastor is Pastor Holman, a.k.a. the big dog. He is not intimidated by me. But all hell trembles at the name of Jesus. So we have got to be a church that's a powerhouse that makes a difference. And listen, I want to just say this. We're moving in to late summer and the fall and then the winter. We have got to have a, a noticeable comeback. I know people, I understand vacations and schedules and all of those things, and we appreciate that. But the reality is when the Lord told me the size of this building 21 years ago, how many seats to put in a balcony, how many seats to put on it, all these dimensions came from him. He did not tell me that, thinking, well, it's gonna, we're going to get close to filling it up, but then the pandemic will hit, and we'll never fill it up ever again. I believe God, God's a little smarter than that. He's all wise and all known. But it doesn't come automatically, church. Here's what I say to you that are here today. It's time that we get serious and we take the challenge. I'm daring you to make those calls. I'm daring you to go on your social media. And I'm daring you to go visit, and I'm daring you to send letters and send cards and send emails and do whatever you can to your friends and your family and let everybody know one month from today, the first Sunday of September, we are going to begin and we are going to hear, you're going to hear me talk about it till you don't want to hear me talk about it, but I'm going to keep talking about it even though you may not want me to keep talking about it. It's time to fill the church up again. I'm telling you, this day, I prayed this day would come over a year and a half ago. God, when can I start urging him? When can I start giving him a nudge? God, when can I start saying, let's go, come on in? And now I'm here, and I'm not going to fail my mission. You're going to hear me tell you that the church is the most important body in the world today. And if anyone has determined that they don't need the church anymore, they are falling prey to hell's deception. That is a lie. You need the body of Christ not as much as you ever did, more than you ever did. As we see the day approaching, let's not be hypocrites here. Let's not talk about, well, I believe Jesus got to be coming soon, and then be flaky about coming to church because, <laughs> come on now, that's what you call good preaching. Because Hebrews 10 25 says, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but even more, even more as you see the day approaching. God, give us a church that is in unity, that we fight for unity, that we have the capabilities, watch this, of not always seeing eye to eye, amen, but still walking hand in hand. Listen, the Apostle Paul had disagreements. Jesus didn't get everybody to agree with him. The reality is we don't always agree on things, but we can still be people of unity. Amen, somebody. In the text I gave you today, here is the results of unity. God begins by saying that unity is good and it is pleasant. What that means is good is favorable. Good is something that's desirable. Good is positive. Good is this very rare and wonderful thing that happens when, when we get together, good things are going to happen. Amen? I believe that something good is about to happen. I believe that something good is on its way. For he promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could be this very day when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I believe that something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Someone said about a guy, you are a jailhouse singer. And they said, he said, what's that mean? He goes, 
Well, you're, you're behind a few bars looking for the key. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, I'm so happy because I remember that joke. I'm just pleased. I didn't write it, but I remembered it. Hallelujah. It's good and it's pleasant. Pleasant means to be peaceful and attractive. Pleasantness produces honor and comfort. There's, there is, if, you have a, if you've had children and you've had more than one and, and, and you know what it's like, that your, your children, your, they'll, they'll, they'll fight. How many of you ever had a couple kids that like to fuss with each other? Uh-huh. They like to fuss. And, and, then, and then when their friends come, they're nice. Hey, can I get you a cookie? How about some milk, you know? Hey, let's play, you know? And then when the friend leaves, they're yelling back at their sister again. And sometimes you want to say, if you can't treat your brother or your sister as good as you can your friend, you're not having no friends over anymore. Listen, God puts a premium on how we love each other. By this, they all they will know. They will know. They will know you're my disciples when you love each other. We've got to love each other. We've got to get past all the things that are trying to trip us up. We have got, listen, we have got to be a church in unity. That unity honors God. Listen, you parents who have those kids fussing, doesn't wear you down a little bit? Like, would you please just... Give it a break. It's no big. He took my tater tot. You got 12 sitting right there. But he took the, my favorite one. Come on. And then they fuss. And then keep your hands to yourself. How many could have a dollar for every time you said keep your hands to yourself? Amen. Come on, keep your hands. Be nice. He's getting on my nerves. Well, they're getting on my nerves. You think? That God looks down and sees his church and thinks, you know, those kids are acting all crazy. I'm just so tired of them. I think God may be saying, don't make me pull this car over. <laughs> unity. Lighthouse, we have to have unity. The other thing, it's like precious anointment. It's like that ointment that is so rare and so precious. And if you ever have a skin rash or something, you put some ointment on it. You, and what it does is bring soothing and healing. There has to be a healing church. There has to be a church that's able to take people who've been cut and bruised and beat and battered and wounded by a, a dark, hateful world and say, come on in, we're a hospital. We're going we're gonna to heal you. We're going to pour the oil and the wine in your wounds, and we're going to take care of you, and we're going to minister to you. Listen to me, church. I feel like I have a great anointing on me to tell you today that there's enough bickering and backbiting and, and fault finding and division and strife and, and wars and quarreling going on in the world. We've got to be able to give people a break from that. When they come to the house of God, we are all going to lay aside our differences, and we may not always see eye to eye, but we're going to walk hand in hand, and we're going to praise the Lord together, and we're going to look past our disagreements, and we're going to focus on what is important. Are you glad you're with me today, somebody? We've got to be that church. We've got to be that church. Hallelujah. I know I have this reputation of not being uh, too worried about confronting, but people come, and they don't do it here. They just don't do it. But if, if you wanted to rat somebody out and tell on somebody, you know, I'm just going to say, stay right. You come after church and want to rat somebody out, and, uh, and I'm just going to say, stay right there. Where are you going? I'm going to get them. That's where I'm going. Oh, I didn't want to talk to them. Well, you shouldn't be talking to me. You're the one. You have a problem with them. Why are you talking to me for I'm going to get him. Oh, Pastor, doggone it. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Bingo. <laughs> I wanted to say that. Amen, somebody. But, no, no we, we may disagree. Listen, I love my wife, and she loves me. Ain't nobody in the world could love me like that beautiful redhead, and ain't nobody in this world could love her like me. But with all of our love, listen, you can love somebody a lot and still have some disagreements. 
You can love somebody a lot and still not be able to work with them all the time. You can love some. Listen, some of you, I, I just know that you think, I love my wife so much and she loves me so much. We can do this project DIY style. Don't do it. There's nothing that can cause a World War III like a house project. Come on. You're putting that board there. You're putting the nail there. You're hanging that picture there. You picked out that color. Save your money and hire a professional. Because <laughs> that will ruin your marriage real fast. Am I talking to anybody who knows I'm telling the truth? <laughs> Kathy and I, we work well together because almost every project, I let her know who the boss is. But I tell her, so once in a while, she comes over to my shop, and I'll say, baby, I love you. And you're the boss almost in every place in my world. But when you walk in this shop, could I be the boss, please? <laughs> it's so hard. We're trying to do, we're, listen, we're taking a bunch, Pastor Dylan, we're taking a bunch of imperfect people who struggle in this clay, this clay temple who fight temptation and, and, and go, and, and we're, we're trying to live the best we can, and we're inundated with all kinds of pressures from the culture, from the outside world, and all the things that, what we are doing, listen to me, this is not an easy proposition here. Did you hear me? To have a group of people, you know, uh, wherever two or three are gathered together, there the mess is, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to be in unity. It's like that precious ointment that brings healing. And it's like the dew. The dew is sent by God, and it brings cooling on the parched earth. It's like the dew on Hermon. It's essential to growth. And the bottom line is this, that we've got to be a church in unity because there God commands the blessing. Thank you, Pastor. God, listen, you want God to make a command? I want him to stand up right now in the front and say, blessing, favor, good things, healing, finances, breakthrough, relational issues. I command you to be whole. And I'm making my command. He and he brings all the blessings together in, in the boardroom of heaven. And he says, listen, I've been watching this group of people called Lighthouse in Richmond, Indiana. And they are in unity. Are you hearing me today, everybody? No, I think three of you are hearing me. Are you listening to me this morning? And I've been watching them set aside petty arguments and petty disagreements. They've gotten out of the fray. They've, they've not taken the bait, which is so easy to take. And they've been strong and they've been United when it would be easier to be divided. Come on, church. They're in unity. And God says to every blessing, I command you. You run down there right now, pour yourself out upon that church. I command you. For, for there God commands the blessing. When God commands you to be blessed, baby, you're going to be blessed. <laughs> Ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Ain't nothing that anybody can stop. When God commands you to be blessed, you're going to be blessed. Even life evermore. God, let there be a church on fire, a church of life, a church that brings life to the death and to the situations that are decaying and dying. I want to ask you a question. How many of you have at least one area in your life or you know somebody in your life that's in the fight for their life? They're, they are under, it seems as though they're under a, a, a warrant, a warrant, 
has been issued for their peace, for their joy, and it's as though death has been sent to destroy them. You know who I'm talking about. Somebody give me a wave. You, you know somebody like that. Jesus said the thief in John 10, 10 comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life. Life. And that more abundantly. God command, command a blessing of life upon us. So today, I'm challenging this church. And I'm issuing this opportunity. Let's be in unity. Let's be in unity. When I pray, here's what I pray. I said, devil, you're going to listen to me right now. You listen. I'm a man of God. You listen to me. I've got the backing of church and unity behind me. Do I not? The last year and a half has proved our finances have grown. The pa- yeah, Lord, I, I, I thought that would bring a shout and a clap offering too. You, you're just as confused as I am. And you don't ever get confused. <laughs> I, I just start a little, I rewind a little bit. Our finances have grown. <laughs> Ministries are coming back. We're going to make a full and complete recovery and come back, and then we're going to grow. I'll close with one question. Since I've been talking about us today, talking about unity, how many of you, the day you walked in this church, your life got better? Oh, y'all are just driving me absolutely in victory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just start all over. I work hard for my money. <laughs> Did you raise your hand? How about you, Charlotte? I'm not trying to call you out. Did you? All right, let's start all over. I don't call, I don't go around calling people out. People think I do. Let's start all over. I know I'm not going to call you anybody out yet. How many of you, fair, fair, fair question. The day you got involved in this life house ministry, your life got better. Your life got better. Yeah. Well, how many have somebody in your life that their life needs to get better? One plus one is two. If our church helped you, it can help them. Stand with me and let's just praise the Lord in unity. Let's just praise the Lord together. Lifting up holy hands. God, command a blessing upon these people. I pray that you would supernaturally honor and bless our decision. It's not a feeling, it's a choice. I choose to be in unity one with another. I choose, I choose to be in unity with each other. And God, I know there are things that we don't always see eye to eye on. I get that. We're people. We have our own opinions. But God, the reality is, can I get more enthused about what I agree on than what I disagree on? All of you that are going to watch this at home now, are you going to watch this later? I want to make a statement to you. It is the plot of the devil to detach you from the church. You were never meant to live in isolation. He wants to disengage you. He wants to tell you that 
You no longer need the body of Christ. You're fine without it. But I expose that. I call that to the surface. That is a lie. You cannot remain disconnected. You cannot be amputated and be remaining a part of the body. You can't detach. You can't detach ever. You can't detach. You've got to get back involved. So, I know you love me, and I love you. But we need you. We need you. Don't just say, I'll send my spirit. No, we need your body here. Your kids need to be here. Your youth need to be here. Every man and woman, every family, every boy and girl, every single, seniors and youth, you need to be back at your church. And I'm calling you home. It's time. September is come back to church month. It's time. How many of you will set your heart in agreement that it's time? Have you been glad to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be a church continuing in unity, ma'am.